for some more insight on the story. I'm now joined by Gernot Sandowski. He's the Director of Global Diversity and Inclusion at Deutsche Bank and a board member at the Charter of Diversity Association. Good to have you on the show. Okay. Gernot, if people with disabilities tend to be more loyal employees, and one can understand the argument, why is it so difficult for, so difficult for them to get a job? I think it has to do also with biases, biases on both sides. Uh, so I see people being biased that Deutsche Bank, for example, is not an inclusive employer for people with different abilities. Uh, but I also see biases at the manager side who say, okay, there are so much things to take into account from a legal perspective, uh, from an environment perspective, working environment. So they are shying back a bit uh, from really offering actively workplaces for people with different abilities. So tell us a little bit more about the barriers that are out there, except for the steps that are insurmountable for somebody who is in a wheelchair, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the barriers are really these so-called unconscious biases. I don't know as a manager probably how to approach a colleague with a different ability. The team members maybe share the same observations or the same problems. Uh, and it's always about building bridges. Uh, it's like the these steps. Uh, you need to build a bridge to overcome these steps uh, and then really see the benefit in having these colleagues having their brain uh, with the company. Okay, again, we'll talk some more in a minute. Uh, first, holding down a job, earning money and feeling like an active member of society in spite of living with a physical disability. These are the goals that are out of reach for many people around the world. About a billion people around the globe live with some form of disability. That's around 15% of the world's population. Most live in developing countries. Only a small minority have access to medical care. 20 million people would benefit from a wheelchair, but don't have one. Most of the world's disabled children don't go to school. Later, they'll have almost no chance of finding a job. Over a million severely disabled people were employed in Germany in 2015. Most had positions in administration, followed by manufacturing and the healthcare sector. In Germany, the unemployment rate among people with disabilities has been steadily decreasing. At 13.4%, however, it's still twice as high as the average rate of unemployment. Let's talk some more with Gernot Sandowski. Gernot, there's a law in Germany that says companies with 20 employees or more have to give 5% of their jobs to people with disabilities mm -hmm. or pay a fine. Yeah. Now, most of the companies opt to pay a fine. Would raising that fine change anything? Um, I think it wouldn't change significantly uh, because, as I just stated, it's a question of behavior. It's not just ticking the box. It's really your approach uh, to people with different abilities or disabled people um, either way. Um, so just raising this fine wouldn't really make much a difference. We at Deutsche Bank, for example, do neither nor. Uh, although we're making quite some progress in our uh, percentage of people with different abilities, we don't meet the 5% hurdle yet. Mm -hmm. But we then work with sheltered workshops uh, to well, also support people with disabilities and their roads. Well, if you take it at companies that are smaller, Mm -hmm. mid-sized companies, yeah. uh, are they more open to hiring uh, people with physical disabilities because they may feel the, the pinch of the lack of skilled workers more at the moment? Uh, that's probably true, but on the other side, they also see some more uh, issues with dealing with all the legal hurdles, with all the requirements. Uh, and that's what, for example, Carta de Vielfalt is also for, to build a network, to bring people together uh, and to share best practice and experience that it's not such a hurdle, uh, that it's doable, and that you then have really the benefit out of a diverse workforce. Mm. What sort of untapped potential do you think is out there in terms of numbers of value? Well, I think it's with people with different abilities, like with the broader uh, space of diversity, there is quite some potential. If people can bring their whole self to work, um, they really will deliver much more benefit for the company. They will really bring in their own brain, their abilities, their experience. If they don't need to hide back, uh, if they no, don't need to overcome some sort of unconscious biases, they can really add to the value of the company uh, and uh, to their own value. Gernot Sandowski, we'll continue our interview in just a moment. Now, a lot of large companies pride themselves on fostering diversity in the workforce. 
but they are not motivated purely by a sense of social justice. Some of it's just good old-fashioned fashioned business strategy. The further you throw your net, the greater the chance of catching more fish. Many societies are growing more diverse. In Germany, people now come from all over the world to study and to work. Lots of companies are hiring people from a wider range of backgrounds. Companies are looking for diversity, but for us that doesn't mean primarily diversity among staff based on visible characteristics. It's more about the creativity, experience, knowledge and skills they can contribute. People from more than 60 countries work at Henkel headquarters. And there are sound business reasons why so many nations are represented. The company sells body care products and detergents all over the world. And people who come from Asia or the Middle East know best what their compatriots want to buy. So like for example, I'm sure it's not Interesting is that actually when people come from different backgrounds, different ways of working, they bring with them a lot of expertise from different markets. Henkel has launched an image campaign to celebrate the diversity it promotes and addresses. A while ago, Henkel developed a shampoo specifically for women in Muslim societies. We asked, what does someone who hides her hair under a cloth all day need in terms of special care? Do we have to adapt the formula? Then we launched the product on those markets. That never would have happened if it had just been a group of Germans sitting around discussing what to do. German universities are also promoting diversity. Anita Benedict Emanuel is in her sixth semester at the University of Duisburg-Essen. She's part of a program that takes on school pupils from non-academic backgrounds who want to study and accompanies them through their time at the university, mentoring them along the way. This benefits young people from German and immigrant families. Anita is the first member of her family to go to university. Her parents are from Sri Lanka. My parents weren't very familiar with the education system here, and even when my teachers tried to explain it, it still wasn't very clear. But luckily the program gave me the information I needed. And the counselors here at the university told us about the various courses of study we could take. That was really helpful. For many young people from immigrant backgrounds in Germany, getting ahead depends on getting help. Many don't finish high school and only around 10% pursue higher education. So the university also offers tutoring for school children. Immigrant families often do not speak German at home. Yet command of the language is a prerequisite for success. Six years ago, Mariam Fakiri and her family fled to Germany from Afghanistan. She wants to become an engineer or architect. It was hard at first because I didn't speak the language and everything was so foreign to me. Um, and you hear people say you'll never make it. But by being in this program with extra tutoring and help from teachers and friends who really motivated me, I realized I can make it. Every day around 300 youngsters come here for tutoring. And the number of requests far outstrips the number of available slots. We see a lot of kids with a lot of potential. Then they tell us how their schools deal with them, and it's pretty shocking. Two other factors also play a role. The first is that they don't get any support at home. Their parents think they don't stand a chance. And second, they often have deficits in their knowledge of German. So, harnessing diversity is all about tapping potential, whatever a person's cultural or ethnic background. Over the past decade, some German companies have signed up to a diversity charter. In it, they commit to creating work environments free of bias. There are six dimensions described in the charter's list of voluntary commitments. The first is sex, so men and women. 
And then there's age. We usually talk about the five generations of people active in working life. Then there's nationality and ethnic origin, religion and worldview, sexual orientation and identity, and finally, disability. The goal is to give every employee the same opportunities. And if promoting diversity is also good PR, so much the better. And we're back with Gernot Sandowski. Gernot, you are a member of the board at the Charter of Diversity, a voluntary commitment mm -hmm. by German companies to a more diverse workforce. Now, a recent study that I read uh, by a recruiting firm shows that more than a third of the people that were asked do not want to work in diverse teams. I mean, that's a pretty sad result after more than 10 years of this uh, voluntary commitment, isn't it? Well, that exactly shows how important it is to really again and again tell the story and tell the story about the benefit of having diverse teams. Um, and we as, as Corda founders, Deutsche Bank co-founded the Corda de Vielfalt, uh, and all companies that are joined up together are really committed that diverse workforce will bring better results. Uh, but you always have to tell the story why it is good and also be honest and say it's not easy. Uh, I myself had a leadership experience with roughly 120 people, very diverse. It wasn't easy. To, to lead them, but we really got the best results out of it. Mm. You are also a diversity manager at, uh -huh. at Deutsche Bank. Do you think this position will at some point become obsolete because uh, human resource will just look for uh, good candidates for a job in all walks of society? Well, thanks for mentioning this. Uh, one of my sort of mantras is diversity needs to get out of the diversity departments. Uh, it needs to go into the business areas, into the areas where production, where revenue generation is, uh, to really get the benefit out of it, to understand where it is linked to clients um, so that we really can get the most out of the diverse workforce. Gernot Sandowski, thank you so much for your visit here. At thank you.